I was running oh, late. So you technically did hit and run. I was I, I saved part of it though. I didn't like leave. Oh, you didn't leave? No. So I don't know if that's like a run. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> hit <Yeah>. and stay. <laughs> hey, I hit you and I parked my car. <laughs> hit and park. <laughs> park. Right. They have cameras all over that building, so of course. That's better than like if you had driven away though. I feel like at least you stayed right there. You were like, I have something I have to go do, but I'm not leaving. Okay, let's get started. Okay, you're a teeny. Anybody got any questions before we get started? I don't think I got the email about presentations. Did you guys get an email about presentations? <coughs> I got an email about him. Ah, boom! F minus for everybody else. Where when did you send? Oh. Oh. You did send something, Hune. Oh, you, you did send it. I did read it and I forgot. <laughs> I guess I didn't read the part that said next week. Oh, okay. presentation. <laughs> I got it. I read part of it. Okay. Hey, I probably did the same thing. Are you teaching online? Yes, so I'll show you who's on. Oh. We have a guest. Do you want to introduce yourself to the gang? Me? Sure. Oh, hello. My name is Maya Lee, and I'm visiting from Venezuela. Wow. Um, so I'm fascinated by this culture, so I just wanted to come a bit more. And I met you, his uncle, in Venezuela a couple of months oh, ago. Oh, nice. And uh, that's how I ended up. Yeah, and I didn't know I was going to come here until I was here and realized, oh, this is where he comes from. And I was so fascinated by the songs and the stories and the music and the dance. So, yes, I'm really yeah. thrilled to be here. Yeah. And I have a, um, so I said I don't understand anything in this <laughs> class. <laughs> and I'm so interested. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're beeping like. Crazy. I think people are getting kicked out, maybe. I don't know what's going on. Everybody online, y'all doing okay? So where are they? Uh, let's do a quick uh, name and where you are currently at. We'll start, uh, start with the online gang. If I go left to right, I see... Kawuch, Sisala, and Pashim. Kawuch, what is your Oh. Okay, Yich Satini. My name is Allison. I'm currently in Washington State. And it's so nice to see you guys and to have gotten to know you. I'm sad not to be there, but happy I was. So. Hi. Okay, how are you? My name is uh, Isola Colleen um, Conlin. I'm in Whitehorse, and right now I've shoveled twice, <laughs> and more snow. Plate the more snow is coming down. Whoa! <laughs> Ah. Okay. Where is that? What's the oh, Whitehorse is uh, north of here in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's a little place. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat Luke, you uh, I'm Pat Luke Reed Magdans. I'm currently in Sitka, where it was beautiful this weekend and very rainy today. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm here. Uh, my Nipiak name is Sumik. Um, 
my English name is David. Um, my Klingit name is Nawea, and my English name Austin Day. Okay. I'm here. Uh, okay. Those of you who I had a chance to see at the clan conference, uh, it was good to see you guys. I was fighting off a cold, so I wasn't around that much, but I was able to make a couple of presentations there. And I hope you guys had a chance to interact with Lots of speakers. There were, you know, that is a lot of speakers in one place. So, and in, in, as a learner, what you've got to keep in mind is if you see a Clinkit speaker, you should engage them in Clinkit. Mm. And so, it's a challenge that I would issue to you that you do that every single time, and that when you do see each other outside of this class or see another speaker. Stay in the language as long as you can <coughs> and just see what you know. And so think about the things that you would talk about in English and do a similar type of thing, although it would be different in Clinkit. You would acknowledge that person's relationship to you, perhaps. You're always going to look at what clan somebody is and try and figure out that kind of information, where they're from, how you might be related, uh, common things that you might talk about. And, and so I'd really encourage that. And then. If you ever see more than five fluent speakers in one place and try to make a language event happen, I was hoping that a language, you know, there were some a number of language events at the plant conference, uh, and I was hoping to do a couple of immersions or a little class or something, but I just did not have the energy to do it then, uh, but there will be some other opportunities. And, and right now there's a planning group, I would say, that's working on language gathering um, activities. And it, right now it consists of Xiao De Steve, who's Kukitan and is in Natasahini. Um, Xiao De Steve, you yet do a song, Natasahini, and he, a youth, a tongue, he died, yet you knew. Ha puts a cakey. She a ticker creati Chukane dich sati, Hutsu, Hayoka tongi dark age in me. Ach gage, ye do a sago at the Dantiki he nekayati, ya Hutsu, Hayoka tongi dark age in me. Ha oneo tea, ye do a sago, Anaki dich sati. Yak to Hoka Tuck on Duck Achgage Yak da Duck Ha Caswood to Caswood de do a sock Wooshkitan Satia Yak da Kayeti Wooshage Wooshage after the Nayi, your singer Duchatungi Wooshkanach at Ushkanach at the Adi, the Kunachatosuk, the Kach in a immersion, ye do a song. Ya Hatuasuku, a Yanahaya, Ushkanahaya got to the art. A Bab Shukwaya was Natasahini. May talk eat it. Gosh Yakta February. Ja Uski at she take a hair was a Dante Kehini, Hechosaku, Hutsu, Nakatlan, Nakatlan Yay do a sock. Took Nahadir Sati, Ku Atlatu, a young glacier valley elementary Hutsu, Wushaja to Nayi Hatin. So there's a group that's working on sort of language immersion and gathering activities. And one of the things we're trying to figure out is how to build a stronger sort of network so we could just do this big email blast and say, hey, this thing's coming up in a month or two, three months, if we can plan that far ahead. But, you know, that's asking a lot. 
But I think there was probably going to be some language gathering in Yakutat in February. I think there's going to be one in Carcross in May. At some point, there'll probably be one here in Juneau. At some point, there'll probably be one in Sitka. So we're trying to do these on a more regular basis and trying to get better at just sort of moving ourselves into the language um, and trying to just sort of live in the language. And, and I think we got to balance what we do so that we get a chance to hear from speakers, and we get a chance to speak ourselves, and we also get a chance to do some language learning, grammatical type of stuff. Um, and combine all those. My experience has been when you do cultural teachings, like I'm going to teach, somebody's going to teach us how to um, make moccasins. We will inevitably switch over to English because there's so much, you're teaching so much content that's new to a lot of people that it's hard to do um, and, and to do all, you know, and so we've got to do much smaller things like we're all going to sew these two pieces of fabric together and we're going to talk about it. And so it's got to be things that we can sort of manage uh, and that way we can start learning a new vocabulary for some of these things. So I think we could do a better job tracking these sort of areas that we're using the language and the types of language we would use in those particular areas. We're pretty good at doing oratory, we're pretty good at hanging out and just eating and visiting and staying in the language. But yeah, so we're going to try and do some more stuff like that. And I'll let you guys know when those things are coming up. Uh, so I asked you guys to watch a language video. What did you watch? <laughs> and you're supposed to tell me what you could interpret. Since we didn't have a class on a Thursday, you had these extra two hours in your life. <laughs> At clan conference. At well, at clan, okay, yeah, clan conference at was not country. Wednesday through <laughs> Monday, as far as I know. So, do that before Thursday if you haven't done it. Anybody watch something? Well, anybody want to give me a sliver can of we, hope? Can we talk about the, like, the last like, session? Yeah. At, you should have been there. You would have loved it. Yeah. It was really great. Yeah, I heard multiple times. It was very, very good. And I'm looking forward to working yeah, on it. How do we get the video? It'll, It'll be on YouTube at some point. OK. Let's we'll talk about that. Oop. <laughs> Where did this start? I'm just... I got in there a little later yeah. than you guys. So what, well, let's, what was it? Let's start there. Not everybody was there at the clan conference. So. Um, well, it's, I also showed up a little bit after it started, but it was supposed to be a session where um, Alice Taff was moderating speakers um, about how, where to go in the future with the language. You know, mm -hmm. we had spent a lot of time at the Grand conference talking about the language and its current state, and the session was supposed to go about where it can go in the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I guess it probably did kind of start out on that topic. And I guess um, some of the elders started out by voicing their support for an immersion school. And, um, and then it just, there was a moment where um, there was someone who, um, who, she opened up in English, this person opened up in English about um, difficult experience um, not having the opportunity to learn the language, you know, mm -hmm. being part of the generation after the boarding schools and growing up with parents who who didn't speak the language to them, to this person. Right. And um, she, this person talked about just a difficult, how difficult that was for them and not understanding um, some, sometimes when people speak kind of and, and then it went from there where all the speakers were addressing her in Clinket and they're, you know, saying that they, they acknowledged the tears that she shed, you know, they, they acknowledged, you know, how hard her experiences were and they were trying to console her and it turned into this really incredible moment of just oratory. Wow. And, and then one person got up and addressed her and then Somebody else got up and spoke 
to, to everybody, and then everybody just started addressing well, everybody in the room. Yeah, <laughs> all, all the you know all the fans that were in the room were getting addressed by the group. Uh, uh. And it was all in language, you know, it's just like an impromptu, dynamic, and with a lot of language. You can mute it through. Right? Yeah. If you push the Alt key, and you can see that little this little thing up here in the corner. Mm -hmm. Alt, and you click on that, and it'll turn your notifications on. <coughs> yeah. If you're ever like you teaching a class, the tricks. well, it's because if somebody texts you in the middle of class, want to see it, I want everybody to see. <laughs> um, Excellent. Anybody else want to share a language experience you've had in the past few days? I watched um, Klaus Klaus when you taped them in uh, Car Cross last year, and, and uh, it was so clear, uh, their voices, and uh, to see them. So I, I uh, listened to them, and they uh, I didn't get... I got some, but uh, they're talking about how um, in the old days the grandparents taught taught things that people had to know, but it's not always happening now. And so the younger ones who don't know their um, shagoon, their um, that's a better word than English. That their shagoon, they don't always do things right and. I just really enjoyed listening to them. Hooch. <laughs> okay, and which speakers were were in that? Uh, it was Kla uh, Ustla, Ida, and Dage, Winnie Atlin, and uh, uh Norman James. Oh, okay. I remember uh, I had to use because there were three, so I had to use a. Usually, I'd use a microphone that you can clip on to somebody. And if I have two speakers, or if I have three, I use a microphone on the camera. Um, and I remember I was trying to get everybody to stay real quiet. And everybody was really quiet. And then somebody walked in towards the end and was just sort of the cowboy boots on and was clomping around. And then we got done and it was great. But I walked up to him later and I said, cowboys don't walk softly. And it was, it was a really fun moment, but it was good. It was pretty. It was a challenge. They 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 talked about their leaders in their communities, and they said, "How come you're not here with us, leading the way?" Which is a a very good question that they asked there. I don't know of very many uh, leaders of. Some of our Alaska Native organizations, uh, with the exception of the president, the, the grand president of the A&B was in our classes for a while. And like, it doesn't have to be my classes, but just to be in some learning capacity, just to show that this is something that's important at the, at the uppermost levels, and that's something we should be sort of calling out for a little bit more, I think. Yeah, that one was fun. That one was a lot of fun. Anyone else have a language experience you want to share? Uh, I've watched, um, it's called Yak Da Ha Yu Dot on YouTube um, because I couldn't get the UAS site to work. But I will say that I really didn't know a lot of what was going on, but it's a video that I had watched before I started um, this class. And it was really neat to. At first, when I watched it, before starting to learn Singit, not knowing anything, but now I was able to pick out, you know, when they were introducing themselves and, you know, which part of their family they were acknowledging, and I could, you know, pick out nouns here and there, um, but it was neat to just note that even though I have so much to learn, you know, just to see that I have learned a little bit. Yeah, 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 and so it's great to just sort of continue to dive into sometimes the exact same material and say, well, what am I going to get new this time? And in particular, if you have two speakers who are just talking and there's no real visual component to, to assist you, I think it's a really good situation to be in. 
and to also um, to do a little bit more work with, with what they're saying. And I think there's certain recordings that you can just latch on to and just carry around and listen to a whole bunch. And some of them you should know what they're saying already so that you're just sort of confirming it in your mind. And then others it should be pretty new and a bit of a guessing game. And that way you're, you're trying to just always push yourself into these new sort of territories as a language learner. Kecha. I also downloaded some audio too. I downloaded the um, the Donna Walk, um, Raven and his nose. And that has click it in English, but then right. I also listened to other ones too. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, so if you go to clinkitlanguage.com <coughs> under the Raven book tab or resources audio, you're able to download audio from there. So you can just walk around and listen to it. And, uh, yeah, there's quite a few that are up there. i got to put more. There's more that I recorded that aren't up there. Um, but it, it's neat to have the options so that you're not always, I mean, the video is great, but then you can have audio that's sometimes more portable and you can take with you. Uh, Raven and the Whale, too, um, by Catherine Mills. That one's very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. She speaks pretty fast. She's a pretty fast speaker. Susie James is a much faster speaker. But she's pretty fast. Cool. Well, I'm going to show you guys a little fun thing I was working on. Um, <coughs> this is my little console board um, <laughs> conjugating clinket verbs. And so I'm going to work on this and just trying to create more visuals to just sort of have a little bit of fun with verb conjugation and generally how it works. Um, so trying to think of this thing in terms of these little switches that you, you turn on and off, which is we think about Clinkit, it's this polysynthetic language, which means there's all these little chunks. Each of these chunks kind of, they, they usually have a meaning, but sometimes they don't necessarily have a meaning. They just have a function. And so I was trying to think of this as switches. It's like there's these on and off switches, and you turn these certain combinations to get specific verb conjugations. And we're going to start shifting over to talking about the verb and where these things go, because it's almost like you're going to have to turn these dials in your brain to get these things to work. So there are certain verbs where the pre-verb turns on. And there's you know, specific pre-verbs like ya, ke, and ye. And you'll learn which ones to use in which situations. There are certain things that push the classifier into what we call plus D. So reciprocal, if you ever say whoosh verb or whooch verb, then that verb will go plus D. Right? And that means to do something together. So the difference, you could say, um, we're going to work. right? But that could be maybe you're going to do, Sumak is going to work on a sewing project, and Nawea is going to work on a drawing, and Sisala is going to work on some moccasins, and I'm going to just work on cutting some fish. You know, so we're all going to work on different things. But if we had one big project and we're all working collaboratively on this, like we're all making a button blanket or we're all doing language work, we would say, So the classifier switches to plus D. We're going to talk about the classifier a little bit tonight. Uh, but there are certain things that will just push it into this plus D category. Then you've got uh, the plural marker here. So you've got, the, this is a third person plural. So when we get into conjugating verbs, you can say, uh, as far as the object, you could say, to us, uh, to, or to me, to us, to you, to y'all, to him or her. But you wouldn't do them in the object category, you would do them in this outside of the verb, which is hus. And underneath that, I should put for inland speakers, I will put duh. <coughs> so in, in a lot of uh, inland speakers, especially in Teslin, they would say duh instead of hus. So for example, I might say hus um, ausaku. They know. But in Teslin, I might say, dach am sekun. They know it's the exact same meaning, 
but they use this dach instead of uh, hus. On the coast, the dach would connect to the verb, and it would mean sort of like, it, the difference would be, um, it, it's used to sort of say every single one of them. So in this case, you might say, um, sea lions are jumping off the rock. But what you're saying is some of them are jumping off, but not necessarily all of them. There's just a plural number of sea lions. But if you were to use the duck instead of the hus, you would be saying all of those sea lions are jumping off of that rock. Right? So it's all happening simultaneously. So this is what is really fun about Clinkit, is it's always categorizing the world. It's like we're in this old, we're in this big clan house with just bentwood boxes and bentwood boxes and bentwood boxes all over the place. And then when you learn the language, you're like, oh, this goes in that box, and this goes in that box. So it's like it's built for people with OCD personalities, because you're like, OK, this is that type of thing, this is that type of thing. <laughs> and so this is it's incomplete. It's just a draft, but as we move along, uh, we have the object, so it's a dial with a lot more things around it. And then we've got thematic prefixes. This is about as far as I got. But what you'll see with thematic prefixes, uh, oh, I need to put an off one right there, is that uh, they can you, you can have like up to about three of these things, maybe four, and they occur in a certain order. And so and we'll talk about these things. We'll talk about what they individually mean. But there's conjugating the verb and there's making new verbs. And we'll talk about the difference between that. Because you can have a verb and you can conjugate it, but then you can have a verb and like changing the thematic prefix is going to make a new verb. Right? So yuck a and tuyuk a are not the same verb. Those are two different verbs. They are related, but they are different. And so we think about that in Clinkit because you couldn't conjugate the tuyuk a to anything. Like nobody's, you can't say, um, I'm making, right, I made the weather good, right? There might be weird situations where perhaps in a story something could, you know, and you can experiment with how things would work like that, but grammatically, Clinkit is going to resist some of those things that are just logically not possible in Clinkit. And we'll also see some things <clears throat> as we dive into the verb more about uh, uh, just how these things tend to stack. And so if we go around our little wheel here, um, when we get into these thematic prefixes, which are like a little bit bigger. So we've got some common ones are oh. And this is a really neat thing when it, when it pops up on verbs. And one of the things we get with verbs is we get a lot of homonyms. Not a lot, but there's quite a few. And so oh in certain cases could be people, like Qusakha, he or she is eating people. Uh, and Qus, in other cases, could mean really it's, we call it aerial, and it means that there's some space, like Qudziti mm. means to exist, and, and you're existing in some specific space. Um, and it's also the one that you use for weather, right? I think they're the same. So you know, when you say uh, that means the weather is good. It means this space is kind of good. And you'll see it pop up in some different areas. It's a really neat sort of thing. There's another one, which is ka, which in this location uh, means to compare things. Like ye kuge, it's that big, or there are that many of them. Which means I'm, it's relative to some given number, or I'm holding my arms up. My fish was this big, and I go as wide as my arms can stretch, because that's what my king salmon was. Um, and so those are, those are sort of your, your ones on the outside. And, and when we conjugate things, we look at the verb from left to right. 90% of your stuff is going to pop up in what we call the prefix. So before you hit the classifier and the root, you're going to have all this other thing that is <coughs> making the verb more dynamic. 
Some other things that you're going to get are these embedded nouns, like je, what would that be? A hand. A hand, so it has something to do with a hand. So you could say ye wune, it happened, ye ju wune, somebody did it, somebody worked on it, right? Tu? Inside. Inside, some kind of closed container. So anything like thinking and then other mm. things like that, mm. it'll pop up. Mm. So a point? A point or a nose. And sometimes these things, they just get Bottom. put in there. Like you could say, we ran around. And the shuk is on there for some crazy reason. What's that? Is it like off of it? Away or off of the? It could be it could be a point of land or it could be a nose or a beak. It's not the most common one. Ji and tu are by far by far more common. Da. Is that around or body? Yep, it's around or about. Um, in some cases, it's a body. As far as the verb goes, it's usually not a body, but it could be. You know, um, but it's usually yeah around or about. Sa or se. Voice? A voice, right? So if you heard somebody talking, you would say, I hear you. But if somebody's just sort of, if I'm trying to sleep and you're rattling a bunch of junk around, I might say, and then get grumpy. Right, so the sa has to do with the voice. I'm going to see that pop up in certain verbs. Uh, so a voice. Uh, let's see. Let's go to this side here. Oops. Uh, ka, ke, or ka. Ka asa. Through an opening? Through an opening, it's typically the mouth, but it could be the opening of something, but it's almost always the mouth. There may be some subtle difference between ka and ka, so just keep, you know, pay attention to verbs, and as we start to look at them more, which one it might have. And there's quite a few others. This is just a sort of, so I get this et cetera category, because there's some other ones that might pop up here. They're a little bit more rare, like limbs and other things like that. Sha. Uh, Isn't that a head or no? Yes, that is a head. So that's the head. So you you could say like there are some speakers and they said kutia shabdutzenuk. Uh, so it was pulled, it was lifted up by the head because you tie all these ropes around the uh, by the head of the pole. And so you see some verbs that have the sha built in there. And so for in clink it's it's a head. It's not always a physical head of something, but it could be the, the top part of something. Sh. Might it be the bottom of something? Uh, no, but you can have uh, tuk in there. There are some verbs that have tuk or tukhe. Tuk tukhe, you can have the opening on the bottom. Everybody has one of those. Things come out of there. Uh, but in this case, it's the end. It's the end of things. So you'll see that pop up in other verbs as well. So we'll ignore this swoosh in there. And I'll do one more, and then we'll switch and do something else. The letter A on here is a little bit different, and so I might mark it with an asterisk or something. There, there are certain verbs where that we just call it a thematic, where an A pops up in the front of it. It doesn't really seem to mean anything, but it locks up that objects or that it just pops up there, and it tends to to um, uh, just lock itself in there. And some examples. 
Anybody think of a, a verb that has the A just built into it? A yaw de T. A yaw de T. So it's always going to be there. A teich. A teich, to dance. A steich. A steich, to fish with a hook. Au de gone. Au de gone, for it to be sunshiny. To fish with a net. To pee. To poop. Those ones, they all seem to be A themed. Uh, and so you just sort of keep in mind that the A is always on there. It affects the other conjugations of the verbs. Um, and, and so you'll see it looks very similar. And some of these things are identical. But if you have a third person pronoun in both the object and subject, the object pronoun will be the letter A as well. So, anyways, just having fun with that, trying to create more sort of uh, illustrations. We're going to use things like this to start talking about how verbs work because they're nice, big, funky animals, and we love those things. And so I think having lots of little devices helps us to sort of talk about it and to demystify how it works. There's lots of moving parts, but we can start to sort of internalize those moving parts and we can start to conjugate. And part of a big part of that is memorizing this list of object pronouns, memorizing this list of subject pronouns. And we'll at some point look at those and start conjugating verbs um, like I love you, I love y'all, I love him or her. And then there's some things that, and so when we say there's some things that like logically you couldn't really say and clink it, and I'll point out when those things happen. Then there's some things that culturally, like you could say, um, you could say, you could say that, grammatically. But if you said that and people heard you, that's a bad, it really, you're just saying, like, I love myself. Right? And this isn't like self love, like, you know, I'm rising from the oppression. It's not that kind of thing. It's like, I'm totally in love with myself. When you could say that about it's someone like else, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Like, you know, <laughs> selfie central or whatever. You could. It's not a very nice thing to say, but you could say something like that. <laughs> he or she loves him or herself. Um, and, and so, but we'll talk about how some of those things work um, as well. So, any questions? Okay, so let's um, let's run through some nouns real quick. I just want to work on possession again, sort of review how that works. So we'll look at this list, and we're, we're only going to go through the nouns here. Um, let me rearrange my screen a little bit. Uh, so what I would like to do is, if it's your turn, I will give you the English equivalent of what I would like you to say, and then you will say it. So there's a list of pronouns, and then these are possessive pronouns. Ach, ha, e, ye, has, or du, has, du, ha, and at. Those are the things that we should, we should know that list. There's a few others, but those are the ones that we should uh, know by now. So start with Sumit, and then we'll jump to our online gang. If I go left to right on my screen, I see um, Kubuch. Um, Yen Kachtla, uh, Sisala, Gwash Aubigan, just Ayagi, and Pashuk. Then we'll come back into the room. My birch. Ach adaye. Ach adaye. Yeah, what? Oops. Are we supposed to repeat? Or no? Uh, no. If you want to, you can. I want me to change this so we can scroll. Uh, Kuwuch. Your thread. If tassi. Okay. Uh, in Kachtla, Yal's woman. 
Say that again. <coughs> Y'all's Wombins. It's kind of weird in English, right? I don't know how you say that. You, you, your alls, uses. <laughs> you alls. That's the Katshawatki. Ye Shawati. Ye Shawati. Sisala, our lake. Ha, are ye? Okay. Uh, let's see, out again. Okay, Tiga. Okay, Pashuk. Uh, his or her rock. Do do tell you? Yeah. What? No way, huh? Their necklace. Has to say there. Has to say there. Has to say there. Say there. Yeah, what? Sumuk. Their spruce. Has to say there. Yeah. Okay. Kubuch, his or her hummingbird. Do the gitki yayi. In Kahtla, our house. Ah, oh, hidi. Okay. Nobody owns a storm. Sisala. <laughs> Y'all's bracelet. Kisi. Okay. Pashuk his or her mink. Du nuksi yani. 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 So if it's going up, it goes down. Yes. Okay. Yani. Uh -huh. No way a person's dying. Ha good day. Ah. Say it a forget the pair. <laughs> Our rifle. Ha unai. Kuwuk your whale. Eh. Yeah, you. Okay. In Kachla, my herring. Ach, yao. Ach, yao. Ach, yao. Yep, so it's got the W ending, so it's going to have the U. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I guess we could do this one. Sisala, uh, their rapids. Hastu e. Okay. Pashuk, our fort. Ha now, ha no woo. Now no whoop. No whoop. No way, uh, my wild celery. Ugh, you're on the eight day. your canoe. Yeah, their bread. Hastu Sakneni. Hastu Sakneni. Okay. Gen Kachla, my porpoise. Ach Chichi. Okay. Sisala, a person's weasel. Ah, uh, ha, 
Okay. Pasuk, our drum. Uh, Gaw. My water. Your mountain goat. A jambu ye. Ye a word. Kuuch yarl's yarn. Ye kakeni. In kakta, our wolverine. Anusku. Okay, Hanusku. So that K is going to change to a G. Okay, Hawa. Sisala, your hooligan. Isagi. Okay. My mountain. Akshayi. Yal's chisel. Okay. Mm. Yal's chisel. Okay. My cow. Your muscles. Kabuch. E. Ya. E. You should make a joke. Nice, your muscles are nice. 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 Pashuk my beads. Ach kawudi. Your moon. No way. Idisi. Yal's alder. Ye keshiji. Kesh no kesh keshishi. Yeah away. Okay shishi. Ah kuuch our land. Uh, Ani. Oh, Ani. Ah. Uh, ah, nobody's going to own the shoreline. And Kachta, my kelp. Akishi. Akishi. Sisla, your firewood. Gunny, Pasuk Yal's Barrel. Ye Kasti, Ye Kasti, Ye Kasti. So we gotta get the tone opposite, and we remember if we're if we're making a guess. Because if we're guessing in English, right, like someone would say, uh, how many fish are in the barrel? And you'd say, 20? So you, you rise the tone at the end to signal that I am kind of asking a question, right? Um, but in Clinkit, we can't do that because we have a tonal language. So we'd say, <coughs> you could just say guash or cliche at the end, and that means I'm kind of guessing. Person's pillow. Okay, now let's move quickly. We'll just make everything. We're going into toddler mode. Everything's going to be mine. Achtani. Enkachta. Achyeni. Achyeni. Tisala. Ach, good. Pashuk. 
Achnadaku. Achnadaku. So K W G U. Okay, that's right. Okay. Achkutiyayi. In Kashta. Achkanest. Achkanesti. So the T would become a D. Okay. Tisala. Achkahagu. Stokaha. Hmm. Achakiaki. Ach Shaki Ati, uh huh. The A. Pashuk Ach Na Adi. The A. Ach Georgi. The A. What? Nobody's learning five. Uh, real quick though, if you're using a kinship term, you do not have to put do on there at all. So you could say Ach Ta Sha Wu. Ach ish shayena yi. Ach klish ko has tawe yi. So even if you have the has marker on there, the has is pluralizing the kinship term. It is not the possessive type of thing. Because I, I used to say, ach hashish ko has du. And you should just say, hashish ko has. So hashish ko has ani is better. Because otherwise, for fluent speakers, it sounds like our grandparents, his or her thing. And so then you switch it to a single person. So we did Tawe. Okay. Achtenayi. So if, if, if this was short and high, then it would act like one of those verbal nouns, but otherwise it doesn't. Okay, pick uh, any kind of button you want. Kawuch. Ach. Yuka uti. Okay. Where does this ut come from? Isakuge? Did I tell you guys that one? Thank you, Oh, then the great shame falls upon you all. Ut is a uh, verb to suction with some kind of oh, sucker. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it's an octopus sucker. The man made octopus suck. Hayaku. Uti. Okay, let's uh, take an eight minute break. Come back at 6.45, Alaska time. I'll be right back. I just forwarded the um, um, recordings. I got them from um, the dean at SHI. Oh, they're like yeah. Oh, it's, um, files she sent yeah, uh, I left before she could 
before she could locate them uh, downtown. So she sent it. Uh, it's a thing called um, Hightail. It uploads it to the internet. You get a link, then you can download it. So I sent you the whole link. So okay. I, um, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. I think she uh, didn't even had to still cut some of them in half to even upload them because some of those are pretty long. Yeah. Words. Okay. Or maybe it's the maybe they're on um, um, records that have a, a top and bottom side. I don't know. You recorded a lot of her speaking. Yeah. She's so amazing. I love it. These are the fish. The third is Oh, nice. They're really different. That's the moon. It's an O sound. The O? Uh -huh, it's O. Oh, the double O? Uh -huh, it's the oh. O. Oh. Now? La. It's a, that's the. Um, now. Uh -huh. The, yeah. The double I is an E? Yeah. And what's the double E? Uh, A. Yay. Whoa. Yay. Okay. That's what you say when you got a kick, too. Yay. Yay. It's a time. <laughs> okay. Renee, could I ask you a question? Uh. Um, I can't find it anywhere, but I was wondering what the word for that, the bird called oyster catcher is. Fugun. Ah, Fugun. It's the same name for a uh, tufted puffin, so they share a name. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I had to ask some elders about that one. I think I've got it in the draft of the new dictionary. Oh, fire nose. Dave Boxley was going over the some animal names. Oh yeah, I was really surprised at you know how similar. Of course, is Gyawadan or Gyudan. Well, some of those, like, they, they, they come it, up yeah, from the so Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. But then old ones, like Eagle and Raven, Eagle is similar, I think, in all three languages. So you have Chalk, Chalk, and Ski. Huh. And, and Raven in Cricket and Hide is really similar. And those are old words. Right. Yeah, so those ones, say, you know, you, you think those ones would. 
push this first and it's so old. But there's some, I think there's some connection. Mm -hmm. A long word from French. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, because it's quiz. It's like quizso in French. Oh yeah. It's quizso. It's not here. Quizso. Yummy. Okay, anybody else got any other language questions? Um, for our posters for midterms, should we just uh, sort of wave it around uh, in front of the camera? Is that good? <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. So we'll put you on camera and you can just point to things or, or do whatever you want. And really, you're just communicating some things to us. Um, we'll take some time. Uh, before we leave tonight, and then certainly on Thursday, to see if you guys need some help saying things. But we're, I'm also going to show you some resources where a lot of the verbs are conjugated for you, thanks to um, the work of Aki Shawu and others who have provided us some pretty amazing resources that uh, we didn't have. Even five or six years ago, we didn't have resources like this. So it's, it's really amazing. And I think there's steps that will be taken that makes these you know, in publishable formats, downloadable formats. There's potential for apps, all kinds of fun things out there. Um, and the key is just trying to make conjugating verbs and learning more and more verbs more accessible. That, that seems to be one of the points, it seems like with Clinkit, You've got pronunciation, which is like, so you got to climb this cliff when you first start learning Clinkit. Then you start running along the ground because you're learning these different nouns, and you're learning some phrases, and you're filling in the blanks. And then you start thinking about verbs, and then you're going uphill a little bit. And then it's just you're climbing a cliff for the rest of your life. <laughs> and so that cliff is really like how to conjugate verbs. and. But the, the mystery is that there's these certain things that change into these really specific areas, like the, the conjugation zone of a clinket verb, which I guess I should open my little... Let me open one more illustration, and then I'll, I'll walk you guys through what I'm talking about here. And then we'll, we'll talk about your ye poster yees. So just one second here. So there is, there's a document out there you guys can get off of clinkitlanguage.com. Uh, it's the Verbal Structure Handbook by James Crippen. It's excellent. Um, and it's really it's trying to just create more and more charts to think about how Clinkit works. But, so what I've tried to do is take those and just make lots of illustrations. And I'm always trying to think of some new metaphors because I like it. I stay up late at night and draw pictures about how it works. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So this is what we have. Uh, so if you just sort of diagrammed a, a clinket verb, this is all the potential parts. So really, you got about 25 or 26 potential things. Although 
there's a lot of these things where they actually, this needs to be sort of, some of these blocks should be stacked up on top of each other. Because you can only have, it's sort of the slot machine metaphor where you can, it's a spinning wheel and you can only have one thing on the wheel. And so if you have this, you can't have some of these other things. And so that's what I'm going to try and do with the, the switchboard thing that I'm having a lot of fun with. Uh, but as far as breaking down what these things do, every verb is going to have a verb root. Every verb is going to have a classifier. Those two things have to be there. The stem variation will also be there. So these three things, they have to be there. We're going to talk about what classifiers are. And so there's this list of subjects. There's this list of objects. There's a lot that goes on in between them. So there, there are fewer, much, much fewer than 1% of the languages in the world that conjugate object, subject, verb. It is by far the most rare combination of, of having verbs. So yay for clinking. You've made it to the exclusive <laughs> club, right? Yay. So the verb root contains the meaning of the verb, right? To. That is, and sometimes there's multiple meanings, and a lot of times there's homonyms. But what, what we're trying to do as we document these verbs is really, in, and this is the work of Jeff Lear, this is the work of James Crippen, this is the work of Carrie Eggleston, is, and Richard Dauenhauer, and Nora Dauenhauer, as we say, you can look at that root, too, and that means to count, or to read, or to study. It really means those three things, and there's a bunch of verbs you can, you can build off of that. Uh, so then you've got this meaning, and you can create new verbs by changing the classifier group, adding what we call thematic prefixes, and there's quite a few that are in here, and there's lots of different... You can go crazy with the terminology. You can go crazy with clinket linguistics. Uh, and you should, but you should also just spend a lot of time speaking, thinking, learning new phrases, learning new words for things. But then there's always going to be this realm, and this is the area, I think, that unlocks using language, being able to just sort of spin that wheel in your head and figure out Oh, cut. It's a chan. You love me, right? So now I could say that. Right? <laughs> say, chan get. Do you love me? And so this is this is really one of the keys for for clinging. So there's the most powerful areas I think are in objects and subjects. That's where you start. You make sure you've got this list. You're looking at these combinations so that when you go to look up a verb, especially the newer there's is not every verb has been documented. There are certainly undocumented verbs out there, right? Like the verb that would result in more human beings. That that verb has not been documented. <laughs> we know the verb, uh, and then there are several others too. There's with, with clinket. Sometimes there's a specific verb for a very specific type of thing, right? And, and so it's really interesting when you start getting into that, and you can spend a lot of time leafing through Jeff Lear's notes and all the things he gave us for EAC. <laughs> I mean, Clint Hitz. <laughs> yeah, our, we're all EAC. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, Michael Krauss gave us sort of a keynote speech and he told us we're all EAC, we live on EAC land. It was hilarious. He us imperial. I don't yeah, think we're... anybody thought that was I thought that was hilarious. I liked it. But I think a lot of people well, were Jeff like, Lear was just a weirdo. We were gonna crawl in the window at... Okay, back to this stuff. So we got subjects and objects. And so when we look at all of this stuff, how does it all fit together? Right? So when we've got pre-contraction and contraction, this is what we're talking about. The primary area where you're conjugating your verb. Mm -hmm. And clinket will conjugate verbs for kind of three main purposes. One is for, for person. Who is doing what to whom? Right? So we're changing the subject, we're changing the object. It is one way to conjugate a verb. And in clinket, it's all built into this one package. It's very dynamic. When you start changing things, it changes a lot of the stuff in between them. That's why we call this contraction. Because these things are very likely to start just switching around. And sometimes they jump over each other, and they, they just get real kind of finicky. And 
funding. And so this is the area that gets really mysterious for a lot of people. <coughs> and then the other way you're going to conjugate is for what the verb is doing. Has the verb been completed? Is the verb sort of, and there's these different things we call verb modes. So we call them tenses a lot in English. We don't have to necessarily say verb modes in English uh, because the verb doesn't change that dynamically in English. So we could just do a whole bunch of complicated things in English uh, that require knowledge of the language, but you don't have to study the verb that intensely as like you do in Clinkit. So for here, there's a lot, and so I'm trying to think of this thing as switches. Because it's almost like you come in and you throw a switch, and we throw this switch, this switch, and this switch, and now we've got the future mode, right? And there's going to be certain things that we would activate to put the verb into that mode. But it's going to change, and now the prefix is going to have this certain shape, and there are some other things that are going to go on. And so this is the big picture type of thing. So now we're going to hide this and stop playing with the little toy blocks. Mm -hmm. What's the longest word you know in Clinkit? <laughs> cell phone? Oh, yeah, is the, that the longest it? single word is probably mm -hmm. cell phone. That's one word? That's one. It's technically, it's, it's a compound word. So, is pocket. It's a long word. 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 It's a People talk, but this thing. That's probably that's probably the longest word. I and mean, sled is pretty long. Refrigerator is kind of long. So what does it mean, like all these words put together? So that one means the the pocket thing that people talk through. Wow. So Clinkit tends to get pretty descriptive when it gets new types of things that it mm. has to. So it'll either get descriptive or it'll use a metaphor depending oh. on if the thing is really complicated mm -hmm. or sensitive, then it will even use a metaphor. Uh, and there's a <coughs> verb. Uh, that was like, <coughs> that was a really long word. <coughs> you thought it was just a cell phone. So here's <laughs> another, this is probably the, one of the most complicated verbs that I know. So you say it. Ach ya de ek shakout nash. So these are built in. So ek is finger, sh is the head of it, k is a horizontal surface, k is the classifier, nash is the root. So it's like this. That's shaking my finger at you, right? Like, no, no, no. Tis, tis, tis. So you know, and some of the verbs can get really long. Some of the other sort of types of words can get really long. So we're not going to start. You know, and there's other there's other things you can do. But could you say that word? Sorry, I want to record this one. That one. This one. Ach yadesh ek shakautinash. And so then and this. You can watch this one on YouTube too. This. Yeah. And oh. so that's. At my at my face, right? He shook his finger at my face, and so really, it's it has something to. And there's certain things too, like going hands and faces and things that you can. Just, okay, I've got to update this one. I'll tell you the updates that need to happen. Uh, chush and the sh are actually object pronouns. So this was something I misunderstood when I made this illustration. Uh, and also, chush and whoosh will push the classifier plus D. And then that kind of stuff is going to make more sense the more you see it. And we'll talk about what a classifier is and what a classifier does. It is one of the big puzzles of Clinkit. It's one of the big things that link us to EAC and other Athabascan languages. Yeah, classifier, having classifiers conjugating verbs in these ways, although they all do them completely different. So when we say pre-verb, that means this This is a, an area right before the verb. It's a separate word, uh, and it's going to pop up 
right before the verb. This chush or this sh is to the self. So like sh tu tu tu, we're going to learn it. Um, so and you saw that to shake one's own finger, you saw the sh built in there. Sh ek sh kautinash. So that whenever you see that sh right before a verb, sh right, which is interesting because that's the word for story. So it's almost like you're telling yourself a story. And so there's all these, it's this concept of being reciprocal. Mm -hmm. And not all languages have, you know, all languages can do it, but not all languages would specifically mark that. And so this is where you would have, um, uh, like you could say, shouts a teen. He or she saw him or herself. Like you walked by, that person walked by a mirror, right? And so we'll, we'll look at, and this is getting into some of the more advanced stuff when you start saying reflexive and reciprocal. Uh, and we'll learn how to do those types of things. I just want to point out that they're there. The other thing that this uh, chart is showing is, uh, let me get this suddenly away my screen. When we look at this chart, uh, hus is how we pluralize the third person when it comes to verbs. So all of the others have something built in. So here's me, us, you, y'all, her, him, or it, someone, something. But they, or in this case, them, which would be the object, would be here. And so this is where Clinkit, there's a couple areas where Clinkit gets a little bit tricky. And you've got to specify things outside of the verb. And English could do the same thing, right? Like if I'm telling you some story about these two girls that got into a fight last night, I would have, if I didn't know their names, I would have to give you something, like the girl with the red hair, and then the girl with the, the yellow hair, or whatever, one with the jacket. And so I would be doing these things to clarify who's doing what to whom, right? And so same thing here with Clinkit, except it gets a little, the stakes get raised a little bit. So I could say, Hasasahan. And has asechan could be they love her, she loves them, or they love them. And it would conjugate the exact same. And so there's some stuff you'd have to do outside of the verb to specify. The other areas is sometimes you can have the i plus the zero, or the zero plus the, the i. Whoops. <laughs> I so. That's I, not i. Um, <laughs> And in this case, it could it could it could get hard to tell. So isachan could be interpreted as um, she she loves you or you love her. Right? And, and so this it just gives us a little bit of extra work to do outside of the verb. And we'll talk about how you would do that. Again, this is sort of a bigger picture thing while we're looking at a smaller bigger picture. So here we've got chet. Ha, i, ye, the zero marker, or a, ka, and k, and then at. So the ka would, or k would just sort of mean this verb happens to people, right? And so it's it's a little bit unusual. Raven uses a lot of these. We call it here. It's called. I should have showed you a more updated chart. It says independent human. We call it the fourth person human or the fourth person non-human. They have very special functions in Clinkit. Uh, and saying it like you say, do a sob. People call it. People call him or her that, right? So the d or the ka or k, they have these special meanings. The same with at. And so at sometimes it's just sort of built into certain verbs. Like you could say at she. He or she is singing, just singing, right? But if you're saying um, a she, he or she is singing it. So now we're, we're talking about some specific song or something. Uh, and same with if you do this with reading and, and other things like that. Eating, so you could say aha, he or she is eating it. Atha, he or she is eating. There's just some slight differences there. Oh, how do you differentiate that from like? Is that like contextual then? Well, so 
what you would have if that were if there were those, those were both verbs, you would say atchai <coughs> achtuasa. Okay. I want him or her to eat, right? Which, for example, say you had somebody who was really sick and it was like your kid or something. I, I want them to eat. So you're trying to get them to eat. I have a question. You don't have they. We do have they. It's out here. So what happens oh. is it doesn't get conjugated necessarily inside the verb prefix. Mm -hmm. pops out into the preverb. You add has, and then you have you have to have one of these. Mm -hmm. And that tells it. But it gets a little bit interesting because it could be pluralizing the object. It could be pluralizing the subject. Mm -hmm. Or if you had both a third person object and subject, it could technically be pluralizing both of them. Mm -hmm. So you could say, Hasausatin. That could be, he sees them, they see him, they see them. And it just gives you a little bit of work to do outside of the verb to specify that. And you really you just start adding some noun phrase. You could say, hooch away, not hooch, hooch away, Hasausatin. That guy there, he sees them. Hush away, hasausatin. Them, they see. And so it's kind of an unusual circumstance. And usually, it, it's usually clear by the context. Sometimes it takes a little bit of thought as far as how to put them together. The other way that at could have some special sort of meaning is like you could say adana, he or she is drinking. But if you say at dana, that means he or she is drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it has this sort of embedded meaning. So you could say, ach it itawaha, sleep came to me. Ach it yan uwaha, hunger came to me. Ach it uwaha, it's my turn. Ach it at uwaha. <coughs> and that's it, quotation marks, came to me. Baby, right? So like you're feeling frisky, shall we say? So the ut is it's powerful, right? And it has these sort of embedded meanings, and it does uh, also as uh, like ut um, that's a verb, and this has this now it has this huge sort of cultural meaning, sort of like ha, ha and ut tend to push things into these specialized meaning categories, and we just learn because there's some things where it, it could just mean he threw something. It doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't have this bigger picture meaning. So you just keep your eye out for some of those. So then we've got ha, tu, e, ye, zero marker, du. And this is how you'd conjugate for person. And what we'll do uh, after you guys' presentations, we'll revisit a chapter and begin in beginning it where we can start conjugating these verbs. And, and some of them, you know, like I'm sewing, you're sewing, he or she's sewing, they are sewing, we are sewing. And so the other area where it can get tricky is sometimes clinket has specific roots for specific things. So there are plural roots and there are singular roots. Mm -hmm. There's a few, there's only a few verbs that do that. Walking, thinking, um, and there's a, there's a few uh, running where the verb root changes once the subject goes plural. Everybody okay? Everybody one more thing. Wow. So that gets us to this. It's the funnest thing, and one of the funnest things in Clinket. It's the Clinket classifier. So think about how the classifier functions. The first thing to keep in mind when we think about Clinket classifiers they're always right in between the subject and the root. They're up there. It's always there. It has to be there. If, um, if, it, if you don't see anything, then it's a zero. Right? That's typically the case. There's thing number one. Is it's always there. Okay? Thing number two. It's Halloween. I saw thing number one and thing number two. <laughs> Think of these like crazy... Dr. Seuss characters who are going to explain the classifier to you. Every classifier belongs to a group. If it changes groups, it's a different verb. Okay? Every verb 
has a classifier that belongs to a group, it changes groups, it's a different verb. <coughs> Can they, so it's like, but with similar root then or something? The root could be the same. Okay. Like, you could say yuck a, and there's the classifier, yuck. You could say kesh uk a, but most speakers would, would, they don't say that. They switch it to a different verb, kesh ushk a. So it comes over here, right? It comes over here. And, and, and there's a difference, technically, yuck a is good, kesh uk a is not good, kesh ushk a is bad. Right? So on the scale, we usually jump to bad. And that's pretty rare, though, when they switch, when they go negative. There, there are a couple that do that. So number one, they all belong to a group. Now they might move within this group depending <coughs> on what the verb is doing. And they tell us what the verb is doing. So as far as the groups go, there's kind of meaning attached to the groups, but it's not always the case. So you can't say, oh, this means that, this means that, this means that. But if you look at the groups of verbs, you can see it. So zero is just the default. Most of the verbs, the majority of verbs, have a zero classifier. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just give it this classifier, there's the verb. S and L have some similarities. I would say S tends to work more with classifying, which is why the term classifier is there. Because Clinkit does this. I'm not sure if other non domain languages necessarily do this. So for example, you can say awahoot, awahoot, awahoot. He's dragging it around. But then you could say at awsahoot. He is dragging it by the handle, like a wagon or luggage that has a handle on it. So sometimes it's specifying like this is being done with something or this is belonging to some certain group, right? So we could say yati is to be, city is to be a member of some certain group, right? The L usually has to do, and L and S could both, it could switch to L and S if we're specifying that the verb isn't just happening somebody is doing that verb, specifically doing that verb. And the, the L also exists to say something has this quality. Like we could say, he or she became a grandparent. hit. That house has a dorsal fin on it. I don't know what. Something has arms, right? So you can have body parts plus and then the, the L classifier that's saying it has this certain quality. The SH group has this sort of what we call a pejorative meaning, which has to do with this sort of not really wanting it. Not in every case, but there's quite a like hate as a verb for down here, but there's others like jumping. You know, I don't know if jumping is necessarily a negative thing. If I were jumping for a long time, I'd probably say, I don't want to do this. But, <laughs> you know, and jumping on its own is not necessarily negative. Okay? So they kind of have this meaning. So let's take a verb root, teen, which is to see. That means to see something. Okay? So the, the running example that I tend to use is, let's say we're all sitting at my house, drinking coffee or tea or water, visiting. And some dog walks into my yard, and I don't have a dog. So I might say, pointing out the window. And that is this one right here. Um, and so this is saying, I see a dog. That's all I'm communicating is that I see a dog. And you might look out the window and say, oh, yeah, look, it's a dog. But if this is that dog I've told you about that comes in and eats my garbage, and rips up my garden, <laughs> poops in the yard, and I don't want it around, and it, does, it doesn't always have to be negative. Or maybe this is that dog that's really awesome looking. Right? This awesome looking dog I've told you about. So then I would say, wait, cake. 
chosetim. I see that dog. And this is why we say yakei because I see you. You are that. So now it is to see this very specific thing that we've already sort of talked about and we know. So now it's what the, what the classifier is doing is it's putting into a group saying, I see this specific thing. Now, if I want to know if he's going to take a poop, so i got to go out and yell at him and get him out of here, <laughs> or he's going to eat my garden or whatever, take chashatin. I am watching that dog. So now I am specifically, I have some agency here <coughs> doing this. And so there's a verb. I don't think there, I don't know of a verb that uses all four necessarily, or a root. But the classifier starts to change, and that's creating a different verb to do a different thing. So if you look through the verb dictionary uh, and you start looking through the root section, the clinket section, you'll see how these things, as the classifier begins to change, now the verb is changing a little bit. Right? And so this is one of the things that the verb does. So I could say, I'm sick. There's the ya classifier. There's the You make me sick, or you made me sick, right? It was you, you coughed on me, now I'm sick, right? So now there's this sort of thing where it's like this, there's cause behind it. That's part of what the classifier does. So now once it belongs to a group, moving between these sort of four areas is all about conjugating the verb. First thing is plus i minus i. Plus i means the verb happened. It's complete. It's done. All state verbs, uh, they're going to be, in the imperfective, they'll be plus i. I'm sick. It happened. It has happened. Right? And all perfective verbs that are positive are going to be plus I. Right? Yisiku. You know. Tudziti. It exists. So the plus I means the verb has happened. Everything else would go minus I. The majority of the verb modes are minus I. So so it switches to S-A. Um, um, you know, I'm not sick, so it switches to the zero marker. And so this is how we move back and forth between plus I, minus I. So we just say zero, ya, sa, si, sha, she, sha, she. Okay? So they belong to one of these groups. They move back and forth depending on how the verb is conjugating and switching between modes. That's what plus i minus i is. And so what we'll get is these sort of charts, and, and we'll, there'll be a little dial on the thing that says, are we plus i or minus i for the classifier? And it really is perfective and a couple others, and everything else is, is minus i. So state verbs um, that are positive are plus i, perfective is plus i. All the future forms are minus i. They all are, because it's specifically, it has not been complete. So that's what plus i and minus i is marking. Are you okay? Dots, dots above the y. So the dots above the y are showing that if there is a u or a double o right here, that will change to a w. Yeah? Or in, in other cases like ch plus y. You get hua. So the Y is, and there's a lot of things where we might mark it as this uh, because it, <clears throat> and this is how clinket used to function. Like if you say, do yeti. That's the way klekach enach do yeti. His or her child. His or her child. So clinket, like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, a lot of people would say, do yeti because the rounded vowel would cause this to change to a W. So we see the same thing that goes on in that suffix where it's going to be yi or wu. Same thing right here. Ya could become wa, and we learn how to spot it. If it pops up right before the root, and we see wa there, then that is probably the ya. 
classifier. Any other questions? Got one more thing to cover. Would they say, like, would they do the same thing for yet key? Yeah, it's like do what key? Has do what key? Do, uh, <coughs> do what click to key? And, and so, yeah, so you you get that that switch, and, and so, but now it's only in a few places that that happens, and so we tend to mark it when we start putting up charts and stuff and looking at some of the components. We usually wouldn't spell things with this uh, with this marker, uh, but in, in in the case of putting charts down and stuff, we would because we're saying if the U or the double O pops up before that, it's going to change. Okay. So the last thing to, to know about the classifier, and we'll keep sort of pointing out, hey, look at there's a classifier. Oh, what form is that? So usually we'd say um, the way that we typically code these things, if it said Achtuwu Yak A, I'd say, what's the classifier? Ya. Yeah. So how would you write that down? Minus D, zero group, plus I. So that's how this chart is supposed to sort of help you identify. And I think if you look at more Clinkit and you think about what the classifier is doing, you'll eventually start to sort of, it'll start to sink in in your brain what the classifier should be doing as you start to learn to use these different verb modes. But a lot of this stuff has been conjugated for you for some of the most common verbs that are used. And I'll show you those resources before we go tonight. Thursday, you can tell me about your posters and stuff. You tell me about the other videos that you watched, those of you who didn't get a chance to do that yet. Um, so the last thing is plus D minus D. So plus D, the most common thing that plus D does as far as verbs go is to indicate middle voice. And English does not have middle voice, but there are plenty of other languages that do. And this says the subject is also the object, right? So the easiest way is to say talking to myself, right? Or um, uh, shaking my own finger, and, and so things like that. And so to do something to the <coughs> self, I see myself in the mirror, I, I'm taking selfies, I love myself. <laughs> okay, so on and on. So it's not always associated with vanity, but it could be, you know, Raven washed himself, right? Or, you know, did this thing or that thing. Sorry, I have to go. Okay. It's very interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yes. And I was so inspired to learn so much about the culture. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. It's made me understand my own. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, well, thank you, you wanted to ask him a question. Oh, yes, I yeah. just wanted to. Well, my, my name means Princess of the Waters. And I was wondering if. if the, of the what? Of the waters. Waters. Yes. So I was wondering if you have like a word. I, if they they can be translated, I don't know. I guess you could say of the waters. Like, would it be in the water or just? Huh. I think. Yeah, I'm not sure that. Because <laughs> for clinking, you got to think: is it in the water or is it just sort of commanding the water or is it like? near the water, and so Klingit likes wow. to get very specific about wow. things like that, which is why sometimes certain concepts don't always translate over. But if, if I were to just sort of go off the cuff and say something, I would say, Hintaka Nitki, I guess, which would be the noble person in the water. I don't wow. know if we should be positioning you. Can you say that again? Hintaka Nitki. I like that. I don't know if I can pronounce it. Like <laughs> well, that one is not a lot of hard. Thank you. Know, okay. Cheesh. Uh, i got to get through this. I only have yes. six minutes left. Thank today. you, guys. Thank you, guys. So minus D plus D. But there are certain verbs that are just automatically going to be plus D because you're affected by it to converse, right? You know, and, and so sometimes that's going to be. 
plus D. The other thing is we talked about when you go whoosh, that'll automatically push it plus D. If you did something like you could specify a verb by adding another prefix in there to say, I cooked for myself. So what that's telling you is I would say, oh, well, we were home last night. I cooked dinner for myself, but I didn't cook dinner for everybody else. Right? And so the other area that you could do this, I know we're covering a lot of ground in a short amount of time. We'll keep looking at examples with this stuff. We'll keep looking at these charts. Is sometimes a, a verb has an object built into it. So we say object, subject, whatever is in there. You know, the rest of the verb is in there. If we're kicking the object out of the verb specifically, then it will also go plus D. So for example, you could say khatu. You know, someone asked me what I'm doing. Khatu. I'm reading this paper, this book, this awesome classifier <laughs> chart. But I can also say khatatu. I'm reading. I'm reading a little bit of this. I'm reading a little bit of that. So if I want to kick the object out of there to make the verb less specific, it would also go plus D. Oh, so that's like if someone's like, what are you doing? And then you're like, khadda tu. I'm reading. I'm just reading. Right. As opposed to, I'm reading this. Mm -hmm. or I'm reading it. So it, it's, a, it's not as often that the plus D works like that, but it does work. Like OK. So I have one other thing to show you guys. OK. So there are some really good resources out there as far as how you're going to conjugate some of these verbs. So we go to clinkitlanguage.com. Uh, and, and we can get the links directly as well. So under print, resources, print, and web, we scroll down. There is 575 Clinkit verbs right underneath that. Continuing verb documentation. <clears throat> so part, oops, that didn't work. <laughs> I got to fix that link. So this is through Gold Belt Heritage Foundation. Uh, you can look verbs up by English. Your goal should be to stay in Clinkit because you're going to memorize all these different verb groups. But you can find these things here. Or you can look them up in the verb dictionary yourself. So you see what the root is. So if we look at the Clinkit verb dictionary, uh, I have to open. But if we look, so if we look up an entry in the Clinkit verb dictionary, uh, like we'll just find something on this page, and we're going to see to sew. So here's sew. How am I going to look this up on this website? Uh, so I'm going to look up the verb root pa, underline k, a, a. What this number is showing us is it's saying, oh, there's another pa, which is to say something. Ye awe, ye ya wa pa, he or she said. So, so uh, here. <laughs> So these are all links. Here's the underline K. I go in. The numbering system isn't always the same. I'm going to guess that it is, though. So here's PA. And now we've got to sew. And so there's several different verbs. A ka, a ka, wa pa. So this is adding a ka thematic prefix, which means a horizontal surface. And now that means to sew or embroider onto something. So it's a little bit of a different verb. I'm sewing this pattern onto this vest. A cut a kaushaka. This is for somebody to specifically sew something. So now the classifier has changed. A waka. He or she sewed it. And then wudaka. So now we see the object getting kicked out. It was plus D. He or she sewed. Right? Just really slight, as we learn how to communicate more dynamically, we'll learn the subtle variations of these things. But so if we say, he or she sewed it, so this is the verb that I want to use. We click on that, and it's always going to show us 
third person subjects, third person objects in the perfective form. It has happened. So now we're going to get these different verb modes. You need to tell someone to sew. Y'all so Gotta make sure you're careful when you say and instead of. Oh, right. So we go high tone, be like, ah, and they'll start sewing. <laughs> so now we get some other things. There's a pre verb there, which means don't. There's some other business going on here. The verb starts to change the shape of the stem. And we get a suffix on here, which kind of means to specifically not do something or tell someone. And so this is the command form, don't do that. Someone is sewing right now. So aqaiz. So it could be khaqaiz. It could be iqaiz. It could be yiqaiz. Has aqaiz. Right, so now we start learning where these subject markers and object markers could change. And in this case, the object marker will rarely change because we don't sew people. Right? It would be just... <laughs> Ropes, maybe some horror movie or something, I don't know. So now we get this, uh, and sometimes it's going to conjugate the verb for person as well. So like if we backed out of here, backed out of here, and we do a very common one, although motion verbs are tricky, we go to goot, and we say, wugoot to go. And now we're going to get it conjugated for person. A day yanni good, a day yanna good. Right, so now it's conjugating for person. You get these forms there. There's about close to 600 verbs on this web page. Extremely handy. So much work that's done for you right here. Not to say it's easy, but there's so much work that's done right here. As you're putting your posters together, starting to think about your sentences, come here. If the verb is not here, maybe pick a different verb. Right? You don't have to tell us your entire, or maybe there's a different way to say it. Maybe there's a simpler way to say it. Maybe you could skip it, say something else, say that more complicated thing later. Again, we're not starting with Hamlet. We're starting with, you know, a, a book for two-year-olds and three-year-olds, which is not an insult. That's where you're at. And if you're a little bit more advanced with the language, go a little bit more advanced. Uh, so this other site is... Uh, her continued work, so this has probably at least seven or eight hundred different verbs. It gets added to regularly. Uh, it's a little bit trickier to navigate, so instead you, you've got this list of, this long list of routes to go through, uh, and as you click a route, uh, since we're here, let's go ahead and see how to do that. Going number two, yes, okay, sorry. No more poop jokes. You. <laughs> so, now it's here, uh, so you can go through and see that, um, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's how this one works. And you can also do some search stuff. So I could go up here and I could say dance, and it's going to get me right to dance. And I can say, right? If you're a dance leader, you want to command something. Uh, and then, you know, here's all these we dance. Y'all dance, they dance. So, so much of this work is done for you. This one you can copy and paste from. Uh, this one uh, you cannot necessarily. So like if you came here, came here, we got to a verb. Uh, you can't really copy and paste that. It's not going to really turn out. But this one you can. So those are some resources you can use. There's a whole bunch of information to overload us on grammar for the day. So now. Two minutes, any questions, concerns, complaints? Um, Kone, um, one of the questions, that, one of the difficulties that I find that I'm coming up with with this is, and maybe I just need to simplify things, but uh, for your example of um, every, everyone dance, uh, the one that you just used, what I'm sort of having troubles with is sort of fitting that within a bigger sentence. Like, um, everyone dance uh, amongst our ancestors entering the clan house or something like that. Um, of just trying to fit things like that together, like knowing which order they should go in and 
like I guess maybe I'm just overcomplicating things at this point from where I'm at, but I'm, that's one of the things that I'm, ha I'm having difficulties with. Sure. So, so my suggestion would be you can say things, but you're going to have to bite them into manageable chunks. So, for example, if somebody just moved here, never spoke English in their entire life, we would we would understand what they're saying, even though they're saying things in very small sentences. So in this case, you might say, you were around your ancestors. You were entering the house. Everybody dance, right? So you, you would break it into three sentences, because once you start going while and when, it gets really complicated. Not really complicated, but it does get complicated and clink it. And we'll start talking about how to tie things together but for now, let's just start on working. And, and you know, those are th you want to count. You got 20 sentences. There's three of them. Don't make it one big, you know, because you could say, "Everybody dance real low and hard while your ancestors are watching, and you're entering the clan house, and you're dancing for your," you know. So don't make it this big, huge concept. But instead, um, make it the smaller thing. And then when we're reflecting on what you were saying. You, you tell us in English, but for now, let's just focus on the, the, the bite-sized pieces that we can communicate. And I, and I know we're hungry for more, but we got to learn how to sort of start the car and put it in gear. We can't just jump on Egan Drive and go 90 miles an hour while it's snowing. You know, so in, in, we we do have to start with these things, but there's there are a lot of things here. So you could say, "Anaich ech." to cut you on. Everybody dance. Hashish ko has chuch aya uhan. Or hashish ko has chuch eha yati. We are among our and And so this is where those directional things are coming into being. Chu is to be among something, right? So it's not always with. Sometimes it's among because that has a stronger mental image as far as the clinket language goes. And then you could say, It's as if we are going to dance into the clan house of our grandparents. So you could tie these things together, but don't try to tie them all into one big thing. But instead, let's go for some bite-sized things. And there are some big concepts. And, and as you're thinking of what your sentences want to be, uh, watching the film, you, you should watch a film and click it and just tell me what you, could, what you can get out of it. This is a language exposure lesson. And you should start thinking of what your poster is going to be. And what, if you're stuck on sentences, let's talk about it on Thursday. And let's get you unstuck on some of those sentences. And some of it might be just paring it down to a manageable chunk. Chunk. <laughs> a manageable chunk. Oh. <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions? Uh, you mentioned selfies, and that got me wondering. So we're not supposed to talk about ourselves, and we're not supposed to, you know, be very self-centered. In the Slingit way, then, would the recent phenomenon of selfies be Slagas? <laughs> 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 it would probably be frowned upon. I mean, no times change, selfie. things change, but the idea of selfie culture and phenomena sort of look at me. Um, but you know, times there when recordings first came out, when the concept came out of I've got this tape recorder, you know, clink it. Tell me this story so I can listen to it later. When, and I talked to Nora about this, and I was like, oh, you made all these tapes. It's so wonderful. And she said, the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. And she actually was regretting the decision in some cases because she had upset some of her elders. It upset them to have their voice recorded. It was a, that was Shagas. But maybe it wasn't Shagas because Shagas implies that if you do this, like if you walk around taking selfies, something terrible is going to happen at some point. But it's more like that's just something that's kind of frowned upon. And so for Clinket people, it was like it was scary for them. 
it was to, to hear their own voice. But then it transitioned to the point where people were saying, I'm dying. Come, I want to tell you these things before I go. And that was David Kadishan, right? Was, he's had his wife call her and say, come, I'm, I'm dying. And then uh, there's people who were sick and said, give this message to them at the Pu'i. So then it began to change. And so I, I saw a, a Haida video of people getting named through Google Hangouts. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think that's awesome. But sometimes, you know, the technology goes much faster than the speaking population is comfortable with. And so we've, we've got to consult our elders. We've got to think about. And you can talk when we're saying, tell us your life story. That's also asking for a bit of exposure. But it's really an exercise to get to know one another a lot more. So make sure in your poster thing, you're not saying, and then I became really good at this, and then I made this, and it was awesome. And, and, you know, and so just be careful when you're doing stuff in Clinkit. You're always towing the line and not boasting. And, and it's a challenge. But, but the, the, the other side of that challenge is you can elevate your opposites. You can elevate those that um, are your guests at a certain thing. But you just keep that stuff in your consciousness that it could get into rough waters. And, so. We're going to come up with a word for selfie. Drawing a picture of yourself. Drawing a picture of oneself. Well, it's usually through your phone, so it could be like through a tunach, pashtua, tunach. It could be. It could be. Yeah, something like that. Could, or a picture taken through. But selfies were emerging when it was just cameras. Once digital cameras got small, the selfie thing I think kind of started. But then it blew up with phones. Because now we all have selfie cameras. Right. Selfie and a selfie stick. Oh and right. Selfie stick. What's the juice? The stick. I yeah hi shkadushki tikas. Me. Okay. Yeah what? Uh, again, we're going to go over a lot of that grammar stuff again with specific examples. It's a, it can be overwhelming to throw all of that stuff out there. Uh, but we'll keep looking at how these things work. And it'll lead us up to more and more verb work. But we'll keep stepping back and reviewing stuff now and then. We've got some other concepts. Now once we get this stuff, we can go back into the weather chapter and start to diagnose how those verbs are working as they shift between perfective, imperfective, and future which is our three basic modes that we start with. Okay, okay? Goodness, cheese. Okay, how are you going to cheese? We should get to the team. Dachunyagi. Good.